Hello again, everyone. Glad that you are following my Jesus Journeys series. This second episode shows Mary's Annunciation trip to visit Elizabeth, soon to give birth to John the Baptist. The purpose of this series is to demonstrate the logic of Jesus living at the Essene Monastery at Qumran by the Dead Sea, instead of at Nazareth near the Sea of Galilee. The proof is shown by the length of each of the journeys, with the sum total of all the journey lengths for the traditional Jerusalem-centered locations being almost ten times greater than the more logical Qumran-centered locations. While following the simulations that I have built using Google Maps API, the great discrepancies of distances with the traditional journeys will give an opportunity to reevaluate other flawed interpretations of the life and teachings of Jesus. Now we're setting up the journey from Nazareth to the hill country of Judea, considered to be Merd. And now we're setting up the journey from Ein Feshka to Merd. Ready, set, go, and they're off. Mary sets off from Nazareth, not looking forward to the long journey to Merd all by herself. But wait, I already hear Elizabeth welcoming Mary for mine Feshka. So let's switch to that journey right now. Mary sets off from Ein Feshka. She has made this journey many times, but she is looking forward to visiting with Elizabeth because she has many things to talk to her about. And there she is, arriving at Murad. It's a distance of 6.41 kilometers, and it took her four hours. So we'll resume our journey now with Mary coming from Nazareth. The Essene rules did not allow sexual relations. However, in an effort to preserve the kingly and priestly lines, it was necessary to allow these men to have trial marriages, and if the espoused wife bore a child, then they would be officially married to her. But if not, they would find another. These lineages had to be preserved at all costs. So you would have supposed that Joseph would be overjoyed to find he had a child, but there was one minor problem. Mary was very religious and very fertile, as can be seen by her five sons, Jesus, James, Joses, Simon, and Judah. After Joseph and Mary's betrothal in June, Joseph decides that no one will find out and does not wait until December and has non-consensual sex with Mary. And now he is in trouble. He could pretend that someone else has raped her, and as Matthew says, he as a just man could have her expelled from the order. The leaders of the Essenes were called angels, and the leader then was Simeon, the angel, and he assured Joseph that he was forgiven because, as the David king, he was third in importance, and therefore he was merely acting as the Holy Spirit. While Joseph was considering his options, Mary, having missed her period, went off to the hill country of Judea to be comforted by Elizabeth, who was six months pregnant in June, according to the rules, soon to give birth to John the Baptist in September. However, Mary would give birth to Jesus in March. After this situation was resolved, there was still the problem that Jesus would technically always be the illegitimate child, only recognized by some. His younger brother James had none of these problems, because Joseph did not risk getting caught again. At this point, Mary has gone 80 kilometers and walked 44 and a half hours. And actually, if this hasn't aborted the child, probably nothing will. So I think we should jump ahead to the end of the journey and calculate up the times of both journeys. Mary has now arrived at Merd from Nazareth. She has gone 145 kilometers, and it's taken her 81 hours. And this compares with the Qumran-based journey from Ein Feshka to Merd which was six and a half kilometers and four hours. 
I hope you enjoyed this Jesus Journey animation, and if you would like to watch more of them, please go to the playlist at the top of the screen.